My name is Linda Hahn and I work at DSV as product manager for cereals and grain legumes. White lupin is a native grain legume in Europe and is grown as a high-quality protein crop. It provides the highest protein content and protein yields among the native grain legumes. White lupin develops a taproot that grows up to 3 meters into the ground with a highly branched root system. These taproots make it relatively insensitive to summer drought and so it generates a high yield security. Because of this taproot and branched root system, it can break soil compaction and also improves soil structure. White lupin is a legume and is able to fix atmospheric nitrogen in its nodule bacteria and make it available for the following crops. In addition, it has a phosphate-acquiring capacity, that means it excretes root exudates via its roots. In this case, citric acid mobilizes the phosphorus in the soil and makes it available to plants. White lupin is a leaf crop and can break up cereal-based crop rotations very well. It also provides a very high preceding crop value. My name is Manuel Dayala. I've been responsible for breeding white lupin in Triesdorf for several years. There are three types of lupin that are used in agriculture. The yellow lupin, the blue or narrow-leaved lupin, and the white lupin. The cultivation of the white lupin was completely stopped in the mid-90s. The reason for this was the appearance of the fungal disease anthracnose. In order to bring the white lupin back into practical cultivation, we have rediscovered the crop for ourselves in Triesdorf and are explicitly breeding for anthracnose tolerance. Out of all lupin species, the white lupin has the highest yield potential. That is the reason why we are constantly working to increase the grain yield, so that the crop can also generate high financial returns for the farmer in agricultural practice. Furthermore, we worked on increasing the crude protein content and keeping the bitter content as low as possible, so that palatability in feed is also ensured. In feeding trials at Triesdorf, part of the dairy herd was fed white lupins instead of soybean meal, and there were no adverse effects on milk production or feed intake. White lupins can be used very well on farms for cattle, pigs or poultry feeding. Our intention is always to pick up new developments, which is why we began breeding these crops very early. We came up with the lupin very quickly and started breeding the white lupin in order to make a contribution to the domestic protein supply in this climate region. We are doing this, on the one hand, in the state of Bavaria with the State Institute and also with the company that sells our seeds, DSV, in Lippstadt. White lupin is still a niche crop, so we join in projects for cultivation and breeding. With DSV, we submitted an application of two joint candidates for official testing at the German Federal Plant Variety Office in 2017 and were successful in getting them listed in the national list in 2019. With Frida and Selina, real alternatives for human and animal nutrition are ready for the market and are welcome on farms. In order to produce a GMO-free protein source for the farm ourselves, we became aware of lupin because it promises the best protein qualities by far. Feed costs on a farm are one of the biggest factors in animal husbandry. Protein is one of the most expensive items. 
That is why it is particularly interesting to be able to grow your own feed on your own farm. The sowing rate of the white lupin is 55 to 60 germinating grains per square meter, which corresponds to a sowing rate of 160 to 260 kilograms depending on the TGW. The seeds of the white lupin should be inoculated with the rhizobium preparation to stimulate the nodule bacteria and thus ensure a high yield. A cultivation interval of at least five to six years should also be observed with all grain legumes. White lupin is usually sown between March and mid-April. It is suitable for soils that are acidic to slightly alkaline, that provide pH values between 5.5 and 7.3. White lupin is sown at normal grain spacing, that means 12 cm, but can also be sown in wide rows up to 45 cm. Anthracnose infestation usually starts in nests in the crop and can lead to total failure. As the disease is seed-borne, it is crucial to use only tested and certified seed. Farm-saved seed is prohibited by law in the EU. The sowing depth should not be deeper than 3 cm, as the white lupin has epigean germination. Epigeic germination means that it stretches its hypercotyl, pushes it through the soil surface, and the cotyledons then unfold. To get a high yielding and also clean crop, it is important to keep the field clean. This can be done with herbicides or, in the organic sector, with hoes and harrows, until the lupins close the rows so that no light can fall on the soil and they can suppress the weeds on their own. The white lupin has a very long flowering period and flowers at a time when not many other crops are flowering in domestic fields. This provides a nice food base for many insects. As a legume, we do not need to add nitrogen to white lupin. However, depending on the availability in the soil, it is even more important to add other important nutrients such as sulfur, boron, potassium and phosphorus. Depending on the location, white lupin gets harvested between July and September. It is ready for harvest at least two weeks before the soybean. The white lupin is ready to be harvested when you can hear the grains rustling in the pods. The lowest pod is about 10 to 15 centimeters from the soil surface, so it can be harvested easily. In addition, Selena and Frida produce a homogeneous ripening of straw, which makes harvesting even easier. All in all, the white lupin makes a tremendous contribution to improve soil fertility and has an enormously high preceding crop value.